Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. And want to appreciate everyone for coming into this broadcast today. And God has a great word for us as we receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save our soul, to empower us to make a difference. And today we'll be sharing, God has more for you. It doesn't really matter what the situation may be in the natural, God has more for you. Sometimes in life, we may face challenges or difficult situations that can overwhelm us in the natural. But God doesn't want us to focus on our natural abilities and consider ourselves being victims of the situation. God expects us to look at his word as a foundation for our thinking. He doesn't want us to be oppressed emotionally because of the situation that is before us. I'd like to read a scripture in 2 Kings, and this will be interesting, 2 Kings chapter 4, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1, glory be to God, praise the Lord, it's actually a situation that has to do with a woman that her husband was a pastor. Okay, greetings from Germany. Thank you. All those joining me from Germany, I'm happy for you. Please, wherever you're watching me from, you can actually indicate your country or wherever you're watching me from. It's always a pleasure to know where you're watching me from. Okay. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to get to my second kings. Rolling through these pages. <laughs> okay. Glory be to God. I'm there. Okay. Second Kings chapter 4. And we're going to look at this story. This situation here. It was a problem that has to do with debts. And she was in pain. She was humiliated, but she has a revelation of where to go. Bahamas, thank you for watching me from Bahamas. Thank you for watching me from Detroit. Thank you very much. I appreciate you for taking out your time, your busy schedule, to just uh, watch this teaching from wherever you're watching it. It was always a joy for us to appreciate people as much as we can. He said, in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1, he said, Now there cried a certain woman, California, of the wife of the sons of the prophet, unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy husband did fear the Lord, and the creditors is come to take unto him my two sons to be bound men. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. And what has thou in thy house? And she said that handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Now her situation was in opposition to her purpose. Don't allow any situation to distract you from your passion for greatness. Don't allow any situation to distract you from your passion. For greatness, it doesn't matter how the situation look, always magnify God above your situation. Never you magnify the situation above God's word. Sometimes in the natural, it looks challenging. But trusting God is the pathway to peace. Trusting God is the pathway to peace. If you truly want to have peace, it begins with trusting God because trusting God comes with stability. You know, when we trust God, there is this stability that takes place in our life. We become stable emotionally, we become stable spiritually, 
as a result of trusting God. That was why Jesus was sharing in Mark chapter 11. He said, have faith in God. Because faith in God actually has the potential to protect you from losing your focus. Faith in God has the potential to protect you from losing your focus. Sometimes people lose their focus because of their inability to stay focused on God's word. So faith in God actually helps us to secure our future. One of the ways to secure your future is when you have faith in God. That's one of the ways you secure your future. So the husband was in debt, in debt, was in debt, and he died. And now has left her a widow. She's a widow right now. And a widow who is going through financial challenges. So what is she going to do right now? And don't forget that this subject is God has more for you. No matter your situation, no matter where you are financially, God has more for you. You say, so I'm behind my rent, I'm behind in my car loan, I'm behind in my taxes. But there is a prophetic word for you. God has more for you. Having this knowledge that God has more for you is an indication to stay focused. It's an indication that you can be focused in the midst of the challenges of life. You can remain focused. In the midst of these challenges, you can choose to maintain your focus no matter the challenges you're going through. Now, she was in pain, but she knew where to go. Sometimes the problem is not with the problem is to have a revelation of where to go. Sometimes the problem is not a problem. In the natural, we may see the circumstances, the situation, and not being in our favor, but we should be able to get back into God's word to find out what to actually do about the situation. Going to God's word to find out what to do about the situation. This woman here went to Elisha, the man of God. There is what is called the prophet connection. When God put a man of God or a woman of God in your life, it is actually a, a spiritual connection that has potential to supply spiritual things, material things, because the anointing can supply spiritual things and also has the potential to attract natural things, material things that would enable you to fulfill your destiny. So she went to Elisha with an expectation. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it said, He that cometh to God must believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if you come to God, you have to believe. Why should I believe? Because I get better by believing. He said, he that cometh to God must believe. So she came to the man of God with an expectation. You see, expectation is the seed we sow to experience manifestation. Expectation is the seed we sow to experience manifestation. If we want to see manifestation, there has to be an expectation because expectation is a product of applied faith. I said expectation is a product of applied faith. Expectation is a product of applied faith. So when we apply our faith or we'll put our faith in God's word, it creates expectation. It creates expectation. So right now, she came to the man of God. We're reading 2 Kings chapter 4. If you're just joining us right now, we're sharing about the widow that was in debt, that was going through financial challenges. And our team of our messages morning this afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you're viewing this broadcast is, God has more for you. 
God has more for you. No matter what you're going through financially right now, God has more for you. No matter what your emotional situation may be, God has more for you. No matter what your relational situation may be, God has more for you. No matter what your job situation may be right now, God has more for you. I want you to project that mentality that God has more for you. Now, if I approach life from the perspective that God has more for me, uh, that is the cure to overcoming hopelessness. You know, some people are hopeless, you know, because of their inability to see into the future. They are hopeless. And when people are hopeless, their energy level will drop. Their energy level begins to deplete. They begin to go down mentally, emotionally, spiritually because they have lost hope. One beauty of hope is that when you have hope, you, you, you keep moving. There is a strength that comes as a result of having hope. There is a strength in hope. A lot of people don't know this, that when you have hope, you can protect mm -hmm. your future. One of the ways we protect our future is when we have hope. And most people easily get frustrated and begin to lose focus of their destiny because of their inability to secure their hope. So this woman here went to Elisha, the man of God, to tell him the situation. And when she got to Elisha, Elisha said, What do you want me to do? And what do you have in your house? You know, there is something unique about you. Maybe most times you don't recognize this. There is something beautiful about you, unknowing to you. There are seeds in your life that you can really sow to have harvest. There are things around you that you may not really see true values in them. But Elisha asked this woman, what do you want me to do and what do you have in your house? She looked at her house and she couldn't find anything of value. All she could say, all she could say is that I have a, a jar of oil or a bottle of oil or a pot of oil. You know, depending on the translation you're reading. And when he says she have just a pot of oil, and Elisha said to her, go and borrow vexes. Prophetic instruction is key to unlocking supernatural provision. One of the ways we unlock supernatural provisions is to respond to prophetic instructions because they have the potential to, uh, to activate our faith to receive Prophetic instructions have the potential to activate our faith to receive. So the instruction he got from Elisha was go borrow vexes. Now let's look at it from this perspective. If she was someone who was uh, in the flesh, she would said, well, the, the last my husband borrowed, we have not been able to pay the debt. Why are you trying to encourage me to go borrow vexes? She never argued with the man of God. She just said, yes, sir. She said, yes, I'm going to do what you said I should do. A prophetic instruction has a potential to accelerate your vision. A prophetic instruction has a potential to accelerate your vision. Now, it, only, it can only accelerate your vision when you do the application of the instruction. It can only accelerate your vision when you do the application of the instruction. So the instruction came to her, go borrow vessel. Go borrow vessel. In the natural, she could argue. In the natural, she could you know, begin to get angry, get offended, get irritated because my husband borrowed some few months back, some few years back. Right now, we are in debt. Right now, we are in pain. Why should I go borrow vessel? But she never said that. Obedience is the key to flowing in the prophetic anointing. Obedience is, if you want to flow with the prophetic, you have to be a person of obedience. And obedience leads to submission. Obedience leads to submission. You can't truly, really, you know, a man of God could walk up to you. God could give a word to someone and say, sow that seed of $1,000, sow that seed of $2,000, or sow that seed of $100, or say something to you. If someone in the natural, if you don't listen to the Holy Ghost to know what God is saying, you may think the man is in the flesh. You may think he wants to take advantage of the money. 
Sometimes God gives us an opportunity because he's making provision through the opportunity. I said, sometimes God gives us an opportunity because he's making a provision through the opportunity. He gives us an opportunity because he's making provision through the opportunity. Our ability to connect to it by being sensitive spiritually will determine what we can receive. So spiritual sensitivity is strategic when it comes to receiving from God. Spiritual sensitivity is very strategic when it comes to receiving from God. A lot of people are not sensitive when it comes to the things of the Spirit. They're not sensitive. They're very shallow. They're very shallow when it comes to the things of the Spirit. They can't really make the connection and they can't really flow when they come to the things of the Spirit. They can't really make the connection. You know, the scripture said in Romans chapter 8, if you read from verse 5, 6, and 7, and it, while he was saying that, he said, uh, to be carnally minded is dead. You know, to be carnally minded is dead. So a prophetic instruction actually is a guide. It's a guide, you know. So we, we have to listen to our spirit. When we're hearing that word, we're listening to our spirit. Sometimes a man of God could call you and tell you something. Or a man of God could call you and tell you something. So you listen to your spirit. You listen to your spirit. Because sometimes, most opportunity you're looking for is an instruction. Most opportunity you're looking for is an instruction. Your ability to maximize a prophetic instruction can determine the opportunity you can experience. So prophetic instructions have potential to create opportunity. Prophetic instructions have the potential to create opportunities. So some opportunities come by responding to a prophetic instruction. I could remember many years ago, the Lord gave me an instruction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And we're sharing today on God has more for you. And uh, if you have this mentality that God can provide beyond your imagination, then you're going to experience provision. God has more for you. Now, if you follow the parts, the first section I was doing before I started this section is a continuation of my teaching for today. Okay. Now we are talking about the the woman that has uh, the husband was dead, Second Kings chapter four, and uh, the creditors was come to take her two sons to become slaves. So she went to Elisha, the man of God. When she went to Elisha and reported the situation that she was going through. Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 1, you can read till verse 12. Now, she told Elisha the, her condition. So Elisha gave Aksa a question. Elisha gave her Aksa a question. Now, the question Elisha asked her was, what do you want me to do? And what do you have in your house? What do you want me to do? And what do you have in your house? And you know that question was so beautiful. Then she said, your handmaid has nothing much what to just have. It's just a pot of oil. And Elisha gave an instruction. Go and borrow vessels. Can I say this to you? One of the primary reasons why God gives an instruction is to empower you. God empowers us through instructions. God empowers us through instruction. Our ability to follow divine instructions is the key to unlocking greater possibilities. God gives us instructions. So the instruction for her was go borrow vessels. Those who won't listen to God's instruction can make it to the top. If you truly want to make it to the top, you have to listen to God's instruction. In the midst of your situation, he has a word for you. In the midst of what you're going through, financially, emotionally, spiritually, God has a word for you. Spiritual sensitivity is the key to unlocking spiritual treasures. Learning to be sensitive when it comes to the things of the Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14, 
Romans 8.14, he said, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, he said, they are the sons of God. As many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons of God are people who are strategic with purpose. They are people whose lifestyle is consistent with God's will. Their lifestyle is consistent with the will of God. So when Elisha gave out the instruction here, go and borrow vessels, that instruction has the ability to reposition her financial destiny depending on how she was going to respond to the instruction. The instruction that Elisha was giving to her, go borrow vessel, that instruction, if she responds to it, she gets better. One thing I noticed about her, she never argued. She never said, my husband has borrowed before. Can I say this to you? Faith in God has the ability to prevail over situations. Faith in God has the ability to prevail over situations. It doesn't really matter what the situation may be right now, but faith in God has the ability to prevail over the situation. All she did was to believe the prophets. She never argued. She never said, well, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to work. Those in the realm of senses will reject truth. Those in the realm of senses will not connect with revelation knowledge. Those in the realm of senses will not be able to unlock a prophetic voice. Those in the realm of senses they find it difficult to connect with God's will because they're trying to reason the possibility. How do you tell me to go and borrow vessels and if I come back, I should keep the vessels and start pouring the oil I have? It doesn't really make sense in the natural. The natural may not make sense out of the supernatural. <laughs> the supernatural work by faith. The supernatural operations Walk by faith. If God is going to provide for you supernaturally, you must learn to believe God by faith. The supernatural walk by faith is not based on senses. A lot of people are using senses to, to make connection with spiritual things, but it's failing them. Because you can't truly achieve anything that is spiritual through your human senses. Everything that is spiritual will respond to it by faith. Everything that is spiritual will respond to it by faith because when you walk by faith, it is easy to manifest the kingdom. It's easy to see greater manifestation. It's easy to see greater results because it's going to be by faith. Hallelujah. This woman came here to the man of God, Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to 12. You read it and she should believe the instruction. God gives you an instruction with an intention. I said, God gives you an instruction with an intention. And whatever you do with the instruction becomes the platform to see in the future. What are you going to do with the instruction God is giving you? So he gives you an instruction. So God wants to do more. But for him to do more, you must be willing to follow his instructions. For God to do more in your life in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, he said, If you are hearkening unto the voice of the Lord your God, he said, He will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. If you hearken, He will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. If you hearken, He will set you on high above all the nations. That simply means obedience is the key to supernatural promotion. Obedience is the key to supernatural promotion. If you truly want to see supernatural promotion, line up your life to obeying God, following his word, following his counsel, following his instruction, making it a foundation for your action, decision, and thinking. This is how you win. This is how you win. Ancient never argued Glory to God. She never argued. She responded to that instruction with, with an expectation, knowing that the instruction has the ability to change her life. Whenever God wants to give you 
an opportunity. Open a door for you. He gives you an instruction. Read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Whenever God wants to do anything amazing in the lives of people, he gives them an instruction. The reason for the instruction is to put things in the right perspective. God gives you instructions to put things in the right perspective. The second reason why God gives you an instruction, God gives you an instruction to focus you on what matters most. God gives you an instruction to focus you on what matters most. The third reason why God gives you an instruction, God gives you an instruction as you can have expectation. He gives you an instruction as you can have an expectation. God gives you an instruction as you can think in the direction of his will. God gives you an instruction as you can think in the direction of his will. God gives you an instruction as you can think in the direction of his will. And most people, because of their inability to connect with God's instruction, lose focus of that instruction. And everything you're looking for is in the instruction God will be entrusting you with. God entrusts you with an instruction as a resources. Instructions from God are resources. They're not ordinary. They have the potential to bring you to the place of influence, the place of possibility and success. That is what it does. So the man of God gave her instruction here. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3. In 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3 said, Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not few. He told them not to borrow few. Because this was an instruction that was going to change her financial destiny, her financial future, and her financial dream. This was the instruction. Go borrow vessel and borrow not few. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 3. Second Kings 4 verse 3. He said, Then he said, Go borrow vessel and abroad of all thy neighbors and even empty vessels borrow not few. When the instruction came, it doesn't look like an instruction that has a potential to change the situation. When the instruction came, it never looked like an instruction that has the potential to change her situation. If she was looking at it from a natural perspective, she would lose the instruction. And losing the instruction is losing the provision. Losing the instruction is losing the provision. So he could have, she could have lost the, the instruction if she was taking it from a natural perspective and said, well, how am I going to borrow vessels? What does that have to do with my situation? Borrowing vessel, what does that have to do with my life? I just came and told you, Pastor, that I'm in debt. They have come to take my two sons, and you're telling me to go and borrow vessel. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't look, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Spiritual things don't make sense, but they change things. <laughs> Spiritual instructions don't make sense, but they change things. Stop looking for what makes sense and start looking for things that change things. Stop looking for what makes sense. Spiritual instructions don't make sense some of the times. It's a go borrow verses and borrow not empty verses when the instruction came in the natural. This woman, can I just explain a little bit about her? She was proactive. She was proactive. She wasn't reactive. She was proactive. She accepted the responsibility to do the instruction. She accepted the responsibility to do the instruction, knowing that listening to the man of God is the pathway to our future. She obeyed the man of God. You see, you cannot truly receive from someone you don't honor. You cannot. You cannot truly receive from someone you don't honor. If you don't honor me, you can't receive from me. Honor is the key to receiving spiritual treasures. Honor is the key to receiving spiritual treasures. Honor is the seed we sow to receive spiritual treasures. So the one you don't honor, you can't receive from. This is why many Christians don't get better with all the preaching and teaching because there is so much dishonor, disrespect, and that is why they don't get blessed. So much dishonor. 
This is where a lot of people have been crying for more than 10 years. Their problem doesn't have a solution. Just simple honor. Looking at the man of God and, and honor him. Or honor her. And say, I honor you, sir. From my heart, I honor you. And one of the ways we honor is not just with word. Honor sometimes is with gifts. I was listening to a dear man of God. And he shared something about a place he wants to go to preach. And someone told him that the king of that country likes pen so much. And he told him to buy a pen. And when they bought a particular pen, the guy that was going with him told him that pen was too cheap. That the king can't take that. And they have to buy a pen that worth thousands of dollars. To go and give to the king as a seed. And when they got to that country, they gave the king the pen. The king looked at the pen. He knew the value of the pen. Then the door opened. Honor opens doors. Most people don't know this. This is why many people are praying, but they're not seeing results. Because this honor will, place, will, will create spiritual limitation. So one of the ways you honor is when you offer gifts. When you offer gifts, gifts is an indication of I honor you. I honor you. And God honors those that honors what he honors. I said, God honors those that honors what he honors. Whatever, God honors people that honors what he honors. <laughs> so, so when we begin to understand the principle of honor, this honor will cost you everything. So this woman honored the man of God because when you honor, you believe. When you honor a person, you believe what they say. It takes honor to believe what the person is saying. This is one thing most people are not taught in the body of Christ. It takes honor. When I notice this honor from people, I stay off them because it will be difficult for them to receive from me. When I notice this honor, this respect, I stay away because they don't have an idea. If you're watching me, you're blessed to watch this. I was telling someone today, I said, this is one of the best scopes on the face of the earth. This scope you're watching is one of the best scopes on the face of the earth. We don't brag. We're not proud people, but we know what God has given, and we know what God is saying. So if we don't honor it, it becomes difficult for we to be blessed. I got a, a text today from Zambia, a text message from Zambia, someone telling me, Apostle, someone give me your teaching in Zambia. And I said, how did they get the teachings? He said, they were listening to me somewhere, and they uploaded it, and they sent it to her. In Zambia, she got it in Zambia from her brother. And she was telling me how the teaching has changed her lives. He said, how can I have more of them? Can I say this to you? Honor is everything when it comes to God. Honor is everything when it comes to God. Why do you think? Let me, let me give you an illustration God honors his word. When God was calling Samuel to ministry, when God was calling Samuel to ministry, God called him the first time, Samuel. Samuel will run to Eli. He called him the second time, Samuel. Samuel, run to Eli. The next time, you know what Eli told him? Whenever you hear that voice, tell him your servant hear it. Why didn't God told Samuel? Samuel, Samuel, I am the God Almighty. Why didn't he tell him that? He said that to Moses. Why couldn't he say that to Samuel? Because Samuel has a pastor. Samuel has a leader. Moses have no pastor. <laughs> so when he was talking to Moses, he was talking to him, I am that I am. But when it came to Samuel's issue, Samuel has a spiritual leader. Although he has missed it, 
God still wanted Eli to get involved in contributing to the destiny of Samuel. So Samuel wrote to Eli, that is honor. He told him the next time you hear that voice, tell him your servant hear it. Can you see order? Can you see structure? He said, let everything be done decently and in order. This is the key to seeing more in your life. A man of God prayed for you. A man of God prayed for you. And the Lord started blessing you. You never went back to tell them, thank you. That's this honor. You were blessed. Oh, this thing you said blessed me, changed my life, helped me. I don't forget those who blessed me. I don't forget those who supported me. I'm always grateful. I'm always appreciating. I'm always honoring them. Because whatever you honor, you protect. Whatever you honor, you keep. You keep the things you honor. You keep who you honor. Whoever that will remain in your life are people you choose to honor. People you choose to dishonor don't stay in your life. Dishonor is a seed. And when we sow dishonor, we can ruin our destiny. There are people I can't follow, not because I don't love them, but because they, 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 I'm, I'm not going their direction. I love them, but I'm not going their direction. So I don't abuse them. Honor is a seed. When you choose the lifestyle of honor, your provision will know no limits. Honor those who have impacted your lives. Honor those who have inspired you. To say thank you goes a long way to prove your level of maturity. To say thank you, to say thank you and said, I'm sending you this offering as a proof of my honor that you have poured into my life is honor. That is the right thing to do. Honor. Why do you think Jesus will heal some people sometimes? He said, take an offering to the priest. Honor. Honor. Glory be to God. Father, I pray for everyone watching this broadcast today that your blessing will be upon them. In the name of Jesus, amen. This is much I could take for this broadcast. And uh, we're going to continue in the evening again for the 90 days of glory. And today will be day 80. <laughs> wow, I've been teaching God's word for 80 days now. So I want to say a very big thank you to all my friends and partners, all those who consistently pray for me. And those who are supporting me one way or the other, I truly appreciate your love, your kind gesture, and how consistent you have been in being a blessing. So we encourage you today to be a partner, to be a blessing uh, to this ministry. This world is touching you. This world is blessing you. Let's make big things happen. Let's take this scope to the next level. Our vision we casted is that in three months, we want to see one million followers and 10 million hearts in the next three months. And we are out on a mission to receive 1 million followers. Uh, yes, do you mentor? Yes, I mentor people. That's part of my passion, to mentor and train and equip people. This is what I do with my life, to mentor and train leaders. To mentor and train leaders. Okay, so our vision is to reach 1 million, to have 1 million followers in the next three months. And also to have not to have 10 million hearts. So let's pursue that vision. So as you come to the scope, tap the hearts. <laughs> uh, you tap the hearts, you know, tap the hearts and uh, see how you could uh, connect more followers and more people. I don't actually force people to do that, but uh, I felt that what I'm teaching and sharing has the potential to transform the lives of people. So we could. Uh, uh, help one way or the other to bless the lives of people. Someone invited you to this scope and you're enjoying it today. So go ahead and invite someone else. So invite your followers and tell more people. If you're watching me on YouTube all the time, I encourage you to share the videos when you watch me on YouTube. Maybe someone could read it, someone, uh, someone could listen to it, could watch it, and it will be a blessing to them. So let's go ahead and spread the gospel. Our Lord Jesus is coming very soon. Our Lord Jesus is coming very soon. So do all you can to win souls, to preach the gospel, to help more people. Bible said, Paul planted Apollos water. God gave the increase. So join me. Be part of my partners. Support me and let's take the nations for Jesus. We got the message. Let's spread it like a wildfire. 
God bless you so much. It's always interesting when I bring you this broadcast every day from Port Harcourt, Nigeria, where I pastor the Discovery Christian Center, a church that is on the cutting edge, changing the lives of people. My passion is to see you rise beyond obscurity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, please, uh, uh, someone said, I think we need to share more tweets to increase the visibility. Yes, please share it more on the tweets to increase the visibility. Thank you very much for that uh, good one. Thank you. I appreciate that all those who are sharing it on the tweet, all those who are sharing it on Periscope, all those who are, who are taking it to Facebook. Please do whatever you can to support Give your best. When you come to this place, support it. Support it. Don't stay behind. Share it. This is how this message will get to more people around the world. This is how we're going to take the nations. If you don't like the experience you're seeing around you, then you have to promote this message. Let's take it all over the place. I love you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next broadcast. Ensure you partner. Blessings to you. Please do enjoy your day. Until I meet you again.